Well, how's it going today, folks? I'm Brad Perdon, and welcome back to the Brad Shack. Um, today, we're going to take a look at this uh, 2009 Articat Bearcat 570 XT. Um, I made a whole video on the actual uh, work on this machine, but my new GoPro, all it wants to record is corrupt footage that doesn't want to transfer to my computer and doesn't want to do anything but crash the whole thing. So, all that footage is fucked, that camera's fucked. So, right now I'm using a Kodak Play Sport, it's my old camera. Um, so, uh, my arm's not long enough, and this camera zoomed in a little bit, so hence the close up. But, uh, uh, this machine came in just for a recoil and the starter Bendix was sticking and wouldn't engage. Um, and normally I wouldn't bother filming for a recoil, you know. Recoil is pretty fucking simple. But this one's a little different. So uh, it's a little more in depth. There's a little more shit that you need to do in order to uh, change your pull start rope on these uh, Bearcat XTs. So I figured just in case anybody else was wondering how the fuck you get in there and do it, I figured I'd show you. So uh, let's take a look. Here she is. As I said, 2009 Articat Bearcat XT 570. Uh, it's got 20 inch wide track. I think it's 156 inches long or 157 inches long. Big bastard. Um, ski stance is almost four feet. I think it's 47 inches. So she's she's a big girl. But uh, as you can see, when I get some light. There's a recoil, and there's an aluminum plate. There's not enough room because in behind the recoil there, you got your, uh, your flywheel dewey that the recoil catches on, and that protrudes from the engine by about two and a half inches. As you can see, there's only about an inch, maybe less, in between the recoil housing and that aluminum plate so there's not a snowball's chance in hell that you're gonna get it off with that plate there so what a guy has to do first things first you come down here above the exhaust there's this connector you're gonna want to disconnect it there's a little tab here you push then up on top of the console, you take yourself a T30 Torx. There's one right here. Same place, other side. Pop those two Torx. Now this whole top console you just tilt it forward. This camera is so zoomed in, it's fucking hard to get a good shot of anything. Tilt it forward. Which comes right off. Set that guy aside. Now you can actually see what the fuck's going on here. Okay. So then you're going to want to take... Start with uh, your exhaust silencer. From the top here, there's one spring there, one spring there. Pop those right here. There's this bolt. It's uh, 13 mil on the back side or half inch. The front side is uh, 10 mil or 3 eighths. I think it's actually just 10 mil. But anyway. The yard that guy out of there and the two springs exhaust silencer will come right out of the way then um, 
a guy can take that bolt out right there which is 10 mil on top and down in here not the first not right there but the second one a little farther back right there that's the one on the bottom side it is also a 13 millimeter on the back side of that bolt okay so you'll take that off and right there is another bolt that one is just I believe it was a 13 millimeter and on the bottom of the oil tank on this back side they're eight millimeter there's one there and there's one a little further back right there right there you see it so those are eight millimeter on the back on the front it is 10 millimeter so you take those two off there's the other one right there so there's the other one take those two off you pull those two on top of the tank then this bar here that comes across got to yard that guy off 10 mil on this side and on the back side it has uh, what size is this 530 seconds allen key so you pull those two and this bar can lift up because your tank has flanges that are on the back side of the aluminum plate and on the back side of this so you gotta lift that that at that point your oil tank is free you gotta disconnect the sensor pinch off the oil line disconnect it and then the oil tank can come out of the way giving you access to that bolt that nut where where is it right there see right below the oil line which is right there there's the oil line and there's a little bolt right below it you got to get that bolt to get the aluminum plate out but you can't get to that bolt with the oil tank in the way so you remove the oil tank and then you got one bolt two bolts and the third one on the back and that aluminum plate comes out of the way from that point on then it is a normal recoil job you know you got your little 8 mil bolts all the way around the recoil housing recoil comes off and you rebuild it as per normal recoil you know um, but then now that you've had the oil line off you have to bleed the oil pump once you put everything back together so once you spend you know a half hour pulling everything out of your way and you spend five minutes rebuilding the recoil and you spend a half hour putting everything back in then your oil line runs from there goes down underneath the carbs here oh there's another thing you gotta pull belt guard out of the way oil line comes down to there's the oil pump assembly right there okay, so there's the oil pump so the oil line comes in on the other side of it you can't barely see it's hard to see um, but right
right. Right there. There is, you're looking at two 10 millimeter ones and not ones a bolt. The one in the foreground right up this one one on the foreground that is on the arm okay the one right there in the background let's see if I can get any closer to it that one right there that's your bleeder once your oil lines connected back up you should put something down here in the belly either a rag or if you can find some sort of a skinny little container oh, focus you piece of shit but anyway you pull that bolt out and oil will once the air's out oil will start running out I like to let it run just let oil dribble out for a good five seconds or so. Make sure all the oils out or the air's out of that line. Put that bolt back in. It's really tight and hard to get back in there. Um, so it's a bit, you know, a bit of a pain in the ass, but you got to do it. Um, once you put that back in, you just snug it up, you know. Clean up the belly best you can because you know all that oil is going to want to dribble right down in here. So you put a rag and stuff there. Then, once you're done that, you know, throw your belt guard back on, throw your top piece back on, reverse of how I showed you to take it off. Don't forget to plug that bastard back in. Where are you? There, that bastard. Don't forget to plug him back in. You'll know if you do though, because your gauge will be completely not working. Your headlights won't work. Um, so yeah. Now when you're putting this plate back in, the way I found easiest to do it, because you got to move it around a little bit in order to get the tank back in properly, is put that one nut that I showed you right it's back in right above the oil line or behind it 10 mil before you put the tank in um, put that one nut in there's also a ground strap I don't know if you can see it right there the black wire that's a ground strap goes to the motor so um, make sure that that ground strap is on there see how it goes to that bolt or that stud coming out of the, the bulkhead put that one uh, that one nut and everything back on while the tank is out and you can even tighten it it's aluminum it's got a bunch of play so you could even tighten that one. Um, it's also easier putting the oil tank back in if you drain it right out while you have it out of the machine. Put it back in empty, you know, connect it all back up. But putting that plate back in, do that back one first. Tighten it right up. Then get your oil tank kind of half ass in place and tighten these top two. And then tighten that side of that bracket. Then you can go along, tighten the bottom two on the oil tank. Then you can do that one right there, that one right there. You can tighten them up afterwards. Snug everything down and. Uh, yeah, throw your exhaust back on. Everything in reverse of how you took it apart. Pretty simple. Um, so, yeah. Um, not too much to it, but, you know, to a guy who's, you know, done recoils on 
machines in the past and then you're gonna look at this and go holy shit you can't even can't even get to it so there it is there's a procedure for 2009 Bearcat XT 570 um, it's not super difficult it's just 10 times more pain in the ass than any other recoil ever in my opinion but uh, yeah I just I wanted to make a video on it and like I said my my GoPro shit to bed and all it wants to record is corrupt footage so do my best with this fucking play sport Kodak bullshit until I get another camera I suppose uh, could start recording with my iPhone but I don't like to use my phone for recording video but uh, anyway there she is so if you're uh, if you got yourself a Bearcat XT and you think you got to take it to the dealer to get them to do your recoil it's not uh, it's not the craziest job in the world and uh, it can be done it's not that hard so that's it for now till next time have a gooder folks